Hi, Senator Scott Jensen, Carver County, Minnesota Senator. I had to chuckle. I was recently on the Laura Ingram show. And prior to being on, I had a chance to watch her talk with a couple of doctors. And I had to laugh. The one doctor was so unbelievably arrogant about whether or not hydroxychloroquine should be entertained and what potential it might have to benefit patients. That's the same kind of arrogance that made Lyme disease so difficult to establish. If you go back and read the story about this little town in Connecticut called Lyme, you'll find that parents were identifying that their kids had way too many joint pains, way too much fatigue, sporadic fevers. They brought it to the attention of the public health officials and to their physicians, and they were patted on the head and told them not to worry, just tell Johnny to do his homework. It's growing pains. It took a decade or more to finally figure out that Lyme disease is a bacterial disease. So when I heard Laura Ingram having this conversation with this doctor who said, oh no, that's not gonna have any value. And then right after that, there was another doctor who said, no, it may well have value. And if you look at some of the studies from nations around the world, get off the arrogance kick. You know what we're learning right now? We're learning that ventilators may actually be doing more harm than good. In a good situation, when someone goes on a ventilator, maybe they have a 40% chance of dying, 60% chance of getting off the vent. We're seeing some studies that indicate that if COVID-19 patients go on a ventilator, in some situations, 70, 80% of them are dying. It may not be a ventilation issue. It may be an oxygenation issue. And the method we're taking may well not be the right one. When President Trump gives a boost to the possibility of a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, he's not claiming to be a scientist. He's saying, hey, there's a glimmer of hope here. This might be good. And he's saying it because France and other countries have done some testing and said, hey, this might be good. And there are doctors in New York State that are using it. And they say, hey, this might be helpful. So when Laura Ingram had this doctor who was so confident and so arrogant on the show with her, I just had to laugh. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I was really appreciative of Laura's willingness to confront him. Some people have asked me, why did I go on the Laura Ingram show? Easy answer. She asked me. I don't think I've ever said no to anybody as long as I had the time. I don't go around trying to rate whether or not this media source or this media source is one that gets my stamp of approval. I'm a senator. I'm obligated to talk to the people who want to talk to me. I try to keep an open door policy and most people have my cell phone. It's not difficult to get. So anyway, thank you, Laura Ingram, for a chuckle the other day. That doctor made me laugh.